name is Jade Fosfit, and you're watching the first episode of Hashtag Science at Home. So I'm a chemist at UC Berkeley, but right now I'm stuck at home. But I still want to be able to do experiments and learn about science. So I'm putting together some science demonstrations that you can do in your kitchen. And so we can't do chemistry in the lab. We usually like to wear our lab coats in the lab. But since we're in the kitchen, I thought we could wear aprons. So if you want to do some science, grab a parent and an apron, and let's get started. So I mentioned that I'm a chemist at UC Berkeley, um, and you might be wondering, what is chemistry? So chemistry is the study of matter, and matter is everything around us. So matter can be a liquid, like this vinegar, or a solid, like this table, or a gas, like the air all around us. And chemistry is mixing together types of matter, like mixing together two solids, and making something new, making a new form of matter, like a gas. So if I mix together a purple solid and a clear liquid and I make purple smoke, that's definitely chemistry. Um, so color changes, temperature changes, bubbles, these are all signs that a chemical reaction is happening. Um, so many of you have probably already done some chemistry. Um, if you've baked a cake in your kitchen before, that's definitely chemistry. Because to make a cake, you grab a bowl and you add your flour and eggs and sugar and milk and stir it all together. And then you pour it into a pan and put it in the oven and bake it, right? But once you have that cake out of the oven, could you get the eggs back out? Is it possible to get the eggs back out of the cake? And the answer is no, you can't get the eggs back out of the cake. And that's because you've done a chemical reaction. So today, I wanted to do some chemical reactions in my kitchen with you guys. So the most classic chemical reaction to do in the kitchen is um, vinegar and baking soda. So baking soda is a base and vinegar is an acid, and when you mix them together, they react to form carbon dioxide, which is a gas, which is actually the gas that um, plants need to live. But I thought we could make this experiment a little bit more exciting by trying to see how we could make the biggest possible reaction in the kitchen. So I'm going to hunt around my kitchen for every single source of base that I can find, and every single source of acid, and then I'll mix them together, and we'll see which one makes the most bubbles and then we'll do a fun activity at the end. So right now, I'm gonna look around my kitchen and gather supplies, and then I will come back with a list for you guys, and you can gather supplies too. For starters, we have a lot of different acids to test, but only two bases to test. So I think what I should do first is decide which base is more reactive and then stick with that. So I'm going to pick an acid. Um, let's do the apple cider vinegar. And I'm going to add the same amount of acid to each of these cups. So I'm aiming for like one inch from the bottom of the cup. Don't need to waste too many materials, but we definitely want to be able to see what we're doing. And it's important to try to make sure that you have the same amount in both cups. So I think that looks pretty even, even to me. So now I'm gonna test baking soda versus baking powder. So I'm gonna add the same amount, like the same size scoop, to both cups, so that I'm just testing the difference between the two powders and not testing different amounts. So I'm gonna use this size scoop of baking soda and I'm gonna add it to this cup here. So I'm going to mark how high on the glass the bubbles got as sort of a rough estimate of reactivity. Alright, so that was the baking soda, so now let's test the baking powder in this glass. And again, we want to use the same size of scoop. How's that look? About the same? Mm -hmm. Alright. So that one seems not nearly as reactive. So I'm going to mark on the glass how high the bubbles got. And it looks a lot lower on the cup than the baking soda. So I think what we can conclude from this is that the baking soda is more reactive than the baking powder. So for the rest of the acid experiments, I'm going to use the baking soda. And I'm going to make sure that I write down some notes about this so that I have an up-to-date experimental notebook. Okay, so now that we know that baking soda is the winner, I want to test all of the different vinegars in my kitchen. So I have 
the apple cider vinegar, the white vinegar, rice vinegar, and balsamic vinegar. And I'm going to add exactly half a teaspoon of baking soda to each glass. Starting with the balsamic. Hmm. Not super reactive, so I'm going to mark how high on the glass the bubbles went and try the rice vinegar. Okay, here we go. This one seems to be more reactive than the balsamic. The bubbles seem to be getting a little bit higher. Oh, definitely, they're still going. I made my mark too early. Very cool. That's a good one. It's still bubbling. It looks like the balsamic is actually going up higher too. These ones seem like they react maybe more slowly. Interesting. All right. But it looks like the rice vinegar is still higher than the balsamic. So now let's test the white vinegar. So this one seems to be reacting really quickly and we've maxed out about here. And then last, the apple cider vinegar with half a teaspoon of baking soda. Okay, so let's compare. So out of all of these, it seems like the rice vinegar had the bubbles go the highest up the glass, but the balsamic is still kind of bubbling away over here. It got pretty close to the same height as the rice vinegar, but I think I'm going to have to go ahead and say that the rice vinegar was the most reactive, especially because it reacted so quickly. So I think the rice vinegar is our winner for the vinegar. Okay, so now I want to test the fruit juices, and I think this one's going to be really exciting. So I've got some orange juice. It has medium pulp. I don't know if that's a factor that matters or not over here. And I have some 100% lemon juice from concentrate. So like a bottle of lemon juice. And then I have this lemon, which I'm going to juice. Now we're going to add the same amount of the baking soda. So we're doing a half teaspoon. Okay, let's try the orange juice first. Oh, wow. That was very anticlimactic. The orange juice seems to barely react. So now we're going to compare the orange juice to the two different kinds of lemon juice. Let's try the lemon juice from the bottle first. Okay, it's definitely reacting, but maybe not as much as the vinegars did. Wait to mark it. Looks like it was about this high at, at greatest, which was a little bit surprising. I thought the orange juice would react, and I definitely thought the lemon juice would be very reactive, but that's why we test these things. And then lastly, let's check the lemon juice that we just squeezed. It seems maybe slightly more reactive than the uh, bottled lemon juice. Seems to be pretty good. That one was definitely more reactive than this one. So of the three of these, the fresh lemon juice was more reactive, but I think our rice vinegar from the previous experiment was better. All right, and so for the very last test, I wanted to do the balsamic vinaigrette and the sriracha, which might react. You never know. So we've got approximately the same volume, a little bit more sriracha. smells very spicy. Let's try the vinaigrette. Uh, nothing. I'm going to stir it around a little bit. Oh, we've got some bubbles forming now. But not very much.
So the balsamic vinaigrette, which has vinegar in it, reacts, but the olive oil that's in here seems to be really slowing it down. And then last, but certainly not least, let's see if sriracha has any acid in it. So nothing's happening. I'm going to try to stir it in. Oh, it's starting to bubble. Cool. So it looks like sriracha does have some acid in it of some sort. It's very, very slowly bubbling up the glass. So we're about this high. Interesting. I was not expecting that. Look at the sriracha. So sriracha has vinegar in it, and that's why it's bubbling. Cool. All right, so the sriracha did react, as did the balsamic, but I do think that our number one winner is gonna be the rice vinegar. So clear up your test glasses, make some notes in your notebook, and then join back in for the last part of the video. Now that we've figured out that rice vinegar plus baking soda is the best combination that I have in my kitchen, maybe what you have in your kitchen is different, we can do the best part of this experiment. So I told you earlier that vinegar plus baking soda reacts to make a gas, and that gas is carbon dioxide, which makes my plants very happy. So the coolest way to do this demonstration is in an old soda bottle, and you can cover the top of the soda bottle with a balloon, or if you don't have a balloon, a plastic bag, or if you don't have a plastic bag, maybe a rubber glove. And what we're going to try to do is trap the gas that's being formed to blow up our bag, or our glove, or our balloon. So um, in just a moment, pause the video and try to find a soda bottle, a bag, a glove, or a balloon, and some rubber bands. All right. Once you've found your supplies, you're going to take your plastic bottle and, with your parents' help, pour some of your best acid into the bottle. So I'm going to fill it up maybe about to where the bottom of the label used to be. So I filled it up with vinegar just to here. And now you're going to take your glove or your plastic bag, or your balloon if you have one, and you're going to add half a teaspoon of baking soda to the glove. So scoop it into your glove, or balloon, or plastic bag, shake it down to the bottom, and you can kind of feel where it ends up. So I'm feeling, and it feels like this finger is like a little sandbag. It's got all the baking soda in it, so that's kind of cool. I'm going to put the glove on top of the opening. And kind of like putting your hair in a ponytail, I'm going to put the rubber band around the top of the glove so that none of the gas that I make when I do the reaction can escape. And it's a little bit tricky because you don't want to dump your baking soda into the vinegar until you have your glove all the way secured. So you might need some help with this part. And I'm going to do one more so that it's really secure. Okay, so now what we have is the glove covering the opening to the bottle, and it's rubber banded in place pretty tight so when I pull on it it's not coming off, and I still have baking soda down here in this finger, and vinegar in the bottle. So now you're ready to do the last part of the experiment. You're going to take the glove and lift it up so that the baking soda falls down into the vinegar, and hold the rubber band and watch what happens. Here we go. So our reaction is happening and we're forming some gas. You can see the bubbles. I'm going to swirl it around a little bit and our glove is starting to blow up with the gas that we're making in our reaction. Can you guys see that? It's kind of starting to wave at you. Cool. So if you have a balloon, this is really fun. Maybe your balloon is blowing up. 
And if you have a plastic bag, your plastic bag is blowing up. So that's the coolest part of the experiment, is showing that when you mix together vinegar and baking soda, you make gas. And we know that there's gas in here because it's all trapped in the glove. So that is one of my favorite chemistry experiments, and I thought it was really fun to share it with you guys today. So I have some challenges for you. If you are a scientist watching this and you thought this was a lot of fun, I challenge you to make a hashtag science at home video and share it with all of the kids in your neighborhood. And if you're a kid watching this, I challenge you to see if you can make your glove blow up even bigger than I did, if you can find something more reactive than rice vinegar, or if you can do this in a different sized container, what happens then? There are a lot of different things that you can test out with this experiment and all you have to do is play around in your kitchen. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again for the next video soon. Yeah, we did it, high five! <laughs>